Tonight, the FCC feels the heat to rewrite broadband rules. AT&T might buy direct TV, but we've heard this before. And Twitter lets you mute your friends. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 85 for Monday, May 12th, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler is revising the commission's proposed rules for regulating broadband internet to include wording that the agency won't allow companies to segregate web traffic into fast and slow lanes. The original plan had sparked criticism far and wide from tech companies like Google, Netflix, and Amazon, and tech investors have warned it will cripple innovation from smaller startups. In the new draft, the FCC will watch deals closely to make sure that the broadband providers don't unfairly put non-paying companies' content at a disadvantage. This is according to an agency official speaking to the Wall Street Journal. The draft will also reportedly bring up whether or not paid prioritization should be banned outright and decide where broadband, whether broadband internet service should be considered a public utility, which would subject it to greater regulation. An FCC vote is set for Thursday, then the plan would be open to public comment. I'm sure there'll be a lot of those indeed. AT&T is close to a takeover deal with satellite TV provider DirecTV and may reach an agreement in as little as two weeks. People familiar with the matter tell the Wall Street Journal, who's scooping up all sorts of stuff today. DirecTV shares were up more than 6% to $92.50 per share in after hours trading on the news. A takeover could value DirecTV as high as $50 billion. However, the two companies have come close to striking a combination before, and it has fallen apart over issues, including price, one of the sources said. So, strictly in the rumor mill, at least for now. Since we're talking about rumors, Billboard is reporting anonymous sources that say Apple could unveil Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre as Apple executives at its Worldwide Developers Conference, which begins in San Francisco on June 2nd. Iovine and Dre are the co-founders of Beats, which is reportedly in talks to sell that company to Apple for $3.2 billion. But an official sale hasn't been announced by either company. Several industry insiders think the Beats deal is less about hardware and more about Apple's desire to get into the subscription streaming space because download sales are falling. They fell more than 13% in the first quarter of this year. Apple's iTunes is the leading digital music store in the U.S. with more than 70% of song and album download sales. Microsoft has issued new warnings that running Windows XP is a bad idea. According to the company's newest security intelligence report, of the versions of Windows that have been released since Windows XP hit the market back in 2001, Windows Vista, which was released in 2007, is the most vulnerable of them all. Its rate of infection is numbered at 3.24%. Windows 7, a little less risky at 2.59%. That number dips even more for XP to 2.42%. Not surprisingly, Microsoft's report also says Windows 8.1 is the safest operating system, which carries an infection rate of just 0.08%. However, older versions of Windows, like Windows 7 and Windows XP, are both used more many more millions of, of times than Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 are, so that also accounts for higher security risks. Goodbye, Square Wallet. We hardly knew you. Square has pulled its geofencing app from the Apple and Google app stores, and in its place is introducing Square Order, which is not quite the same. It's an app that lets shoppers place pickup orders from and pay at coffee shops and other merchants from their mobile devices. Square says it will continue to support the Wallet app for those who have already downloaded it, in part because Order, the new app, was built with new backend technology and actually doesn't technically replace it. But Wallet will no longer be available for new users to download. Last fall, Pinterest announced that advertisements would soon show up on its service in the form of promoted pins or featured placements from certain retailers and businesses. Today, an official rollout of a paid test of promoted pins has begun. Pinterest says these pins will only appear on the search and category feeds. Banana Republic, ABC Family, Expedia, General Mills, Kraft, Nestle, Old Navy, Walt Disney Parks... Even Ziploc, all launch partners in the test. The company says it wants to collect feedback prior to opening up the paid advertisements to more businesses throughout the year. Coming up in the future, how will driverless cars decide who to kill in a traffic accident? 
But first, for something completely different, I'm joined by Josh Ong, U.S. editor at The Next Web. Hey, Josh. Hi, Sarah. How, How are you? Doing? How are you? Great, thanks. I asked you before the show if you had muted anyone today, and of course, I'm referring to Twitter's new functionality in its official apps and also on Twitter.com that you or I could mute each other without actually unfollowing each other. Now, this is something that's been available in certain third-party apps. As a Tweetbot user, I've, I've muted people in the past, and it certainly works for a kind of passive-aggressive, I don't want to hear from you anymore, but I don't want to have that difficult conversation about unfollows, but... Does it put emphasis on the fact that Twitter knows that follow numbers are kind of pointless? Well, I think it's a bit of an admission on Twitter's part that the service is becoming noisy, um, either because just of the amount of people that, that everyone's following or, or because you have people just trying to say so much and share so much on the service. And, and I think it's come down to this, that we need to start muting each other. Especially with uh, the, uh, the the rise of what's called a tweet storm, which is when somebody has something that's possibly as long as a blog post and, and splitting it up into a variety of tweets. Does it, you mentioned it, it's noisy. Does it also have to do with the idea that, you know, we can't act too differently than we do in real life, even if it's on a social network. If I don't want to admit to somebody that I don't like the way that they tweet, it's so much easier for me to mute them than unfollow them, but it's not exactly an upfront way to, to deal with somebody. Well, I think, you know, the great thing about social media is sometimes we can actually act different than we can in real life. You know, if I'm talking to you face to face, it's very difficult for me to just kind of turn around and ignore you or just, um, you know, walk away. It, it certainly happens. But now online, we can we can just kind of jump in and out of these conversations and quiet people on our end. And the, the thing that Twitter is trying to do with mute is that the muted person has no idea that it's happened. So they could just keep talking. They can do whatever they want. But you aren't able to see it. Are there specific situations that you think, besides there being a personal issue, that a mute button comes in really handy? I guess if uh, some sort of appointment viewing of a, of a, of a of sports game that you knew you were going to watch on tape delay, for example, or, or a, you know, an episode of a show where you didn't want any spoilers, I guess that's part of it too. Yeah, I think that's huge. I'm very anti-spoiler. Last night I logged on to Twitter and then people were tweeting about Mad Men, so I just signed off because I was going to watch it today. Um, same thing with like Game of Thrones. Um, I think Twitter, one of the fun things about Twitter is it's becoming this kind of global participation in, in events, it's things like the Oscars or the Super Bowl. But, but not all of those are relevant for everyone. And so there's going to be a time where someone who's like live tweeting all Super Bowl commercials is going to be um, just really noisy for someone else and mm -hmm. they can just mute them for a few hours. I'd love to see actually some timers on this. Um, I think this is, you know, an initial rollout. But um, one of the concerns that I was hearing from people on Twitter is, well, once you mute someone for, a, you know, while they're doing their tweet storm or live tweeting something, how are you going to remember to go back and unmute them? And if you don't, then you just turn them off until, you know, indefinitely. You kind of so, forget that they exist. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's and funny. You'll discover it. It'll be awkward. Right. right. Exactly. You're like, gosh, you haven't been on Twitter for like a year. Oh, you have. Right. I muted you. Yeah, yeah I, I use Tweetbot. That's my third party client of choice. And I went and looked at my mute list uh, earlier today because there are some people who are muted. And it's true. I had kind of forgotten about their Twitter presences. And that's not necessarily a good thing either. Do you think having timed mute uh, is is set to follow? That That is something that, that uh, TweetDeck and Tweetbot both do. Mm. Well, I think Twitter's going to see how this goes. They actually tried to roll something like this out last December with when they wanted to change the blocking feature. And, and that had this huge backlash, if you remember, and it took them all about four or five hours before they rolled it back. Um, this is basically that feature with a few different changes, um, but it's being recast as rather than something that's, say, security-related, something that has to do with your interaction with people who are abusing Twitter and being... Yeah, obnoxious. This is kind of more quieting people that are being annoying, that are degrading the overall experience for you, but maybe you don't have the norms to be able to just unfollow. So um, I think we'll see as an experiment how this goes. And Twitter tends to kind of, they're stuck in between the, the very active users, people who've been on the service for years, who use it, you know, religiously, and then trying to break into the mainstream. And so you might even see something like TweetDeck 
getting more kind of pro level features like they've done with um, the custom timelines. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, trying to kind of filter out those additional features from clogging up the main apps and the main web service so that um, your mainstream users can still feel accessible. Last question for me, how long before we find a Twitter hack where we can all see who has muted us? I'd give it a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, exactly. it's supposed to be invisible on that side, but uh, mm. but you know those those services where people can tell when you're unfollowed. It's it's really interesting. I think it's part of the reason why this came up is um, people were keeping track of like, oh, you unfollowed me, and it became this, um, you know, this kind of level of social interaction where you were doing someone something to someone, even though it was very kind of passive. Um, and so I think uh, moving forward, people are going to want to know if they're muted. It's it's we all want to. You kind of do, yeah, in a, in a masochistic sort of way. I would like to know, and sure. it would it might help me. Oh gosh, I was really annoying that day. Now I won't make the same mistake again. Josh Ong is the U.S. editor for the Next Web. Thanks so much for joining us, and tell folks where they can keep up with everything you do. TheNextWeb.com and uh, Beijing Doe on Twitter. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Thanks, Josh. All right, finally, this is a tough one. If you're in a driverless car being driven and somehow, for whatever reason, you're forced into an accident, what should the car do? Should the car make sure that you live at any cost or make some sort of a choice of whether to save the four people that might not live if you end up surviving the collision? And who creates the code that decides these rules? Is this a programmer's job? Is this something that legislators decide? Somebody, somewhere, authorized a robot to act. A new story in Popular Science is asking some difficult questions. Another in Wired covers the same stuff. And it's pretty terrifying, but also pretty interesting because if driverless cars are to be a reality, robo-ethics is also something that we're all going to have to deal with. So I just thought we'd end on a really lighthearted note. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, and feedback. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.